Uh, but it, it does apply to everything. Here I have, uh, you know, the Mystery Machine and uh, the Scooby-Doo Gang. Uh, the, the principle here is to follow the clues. Like in many times, like on an image, you'll have some clues. Uh, on that chest, there was like soft tissue swelling of the chest wall. I should have looked at the clavicle. Uh, what kind of clues like are in neuroradiology? Soft tissue injury we've already talked about. Uh, fluid. Like when you have fluid in a sinus, especially if it has like a fluid level, uh, then look closer at the walls of that sinus. Look closer at the walls of the mastoid. Um, many times, like for a temporal bone fracture, all you'll see on the original CT is some kind of asymmetric fluid in the mastoids and maybe like a little soft tissue swelling. And then you have to recommend to get, a, a, to get thinner slices. Um, effacement of sulci, sometimes for like a mass or a stroke, maybe all you'll see is like in the top slices at the very top of the image, you may just see that you see the sulci on one side of the brain better than the other. And then you'll scroll through on that side and you'll find a finding that uh, you wouldn't have seen otherwise. Um, the history is also useful if you get useful history, but we've, we've talked about that uh, quite a bit. So I have a case here. Um, I don't know, someone, is there like a more senior resident who wants to see this case or maybe can describe it for us? Sure. Um, so, the... so the history was, uh, like, yeah, this, the history, this guy like came to the hospital because he had otitis externa. He's getting a chest x-ray and he fell in the radiology department. So I'll scroll through them and uh, let you see. I'm going to have a stop sign here. That's kind of all you got. Well, I'll come back and I'll stop on like one relevant image here. So there's a little bit of soft tissue thickening on the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's like some soft tissue thickening here. And uh, so he was here also for otitis externa. And like maybe his like, I mean, he's got this like soft tissue stuff here. I, I don't know. So that's probably related to what he's there for. Anything else? So there's like a, some, uh, I mean, the superior side of the sinus of the posterior has like low density, but for a class, you usually think high density. Actually, no. Um, so yeah. Maybe there's like the thrombosis there. So, but if you're if you're thinking about the clues, like so, what's your clue here that there's been some injury? So the soft tissue injury. Uh, yeah. So where do you think you should look? So contralateral side. So contracoup injury. So contracoup injury. So yeah, it looks okay. Like I'll give you the other side. But what about the what about the coup side? Yeah, there's a little bit of really look like. Like is there focus, some? Yeah. Like is that something? And then let's we'll like look as we'll go up a little more. Oh, there it is. There. So there's subdural. Yeah. So there's a tiny like there's a tiniest like subdural ever. Um. So there's a clue there. This story like gets a little more complex because in this case like the resident didn't see that. Okay. He said it was normal. Said there was a preauricular stuff, and uh, kind of sent back to the floor. And he started his anticoagulation. Um. Six days later, he's like still in the hospital. He's just not getting better. They sent him down for like another CT. Which is abuse, extraaxial blood, and Yeah, so things like have gotten nasty like pretty quickly. Like he's got this big mixed density subdural. He's got tons of mass effect on this uh, cerebral hemisphere. He's got this hemorrhagic contusion here uh, where there's some like f blood levels. And he's on anticoagulation. And I, I don't remember what he was on anticoagulation for. But uh, intracranial blood can be a contraindication to starting someone on anticoagulation. So they call neurosurgery. Uh, they say that, you know, this is a subdural. It's gotten a lot worse. And there's a hemorrhagic contusion there. They do a subdural evacuation. It's like not, things are not good here. There's like a big parenchymal hematoma there. There's still like subdural. There's a ton of midline shift. And uh, really, like things are like not uh, not looking good for that guy. I'll go back and I'll show you four. These are four consecutive slices from that original study. There's your soft tissue swelling. There's Fred from uh, Scooby Doo. He's like, I don't know, is there a clue there? And like within a couple of slices, you see there's like clearly subdural hematoma there. Um, that's easily a missable subdural hematoma. The resident missed it. The faculty who read it the next day missed it. Um, it's, I mean, this is a, 
problem. It created major problems for this patient. Um, all the time I was a resident, this was like the only time, unmask that Scooby-Doo villain, uh, fo like follow those clues and like look at the areas where the injuries are more likely to happen. Uh, this is one of the only times I've ever seen like actually something truly bad happen with relation to a resident miss. And like the resident like is not really on the resident. I mean, the faculty who like read it the next day like should have should have seen that as well. And this patient ultimately died. And this is like one of the worst like radiology related outcomes that I've seen. But uh, just think about that, like when you're looking like at these studies, like and I'm not saying this to frighten you guys, um, but but beware of like when there are injuries and you're in a rush and uh, you got, but like when you see like one thing, you got to start looking for, for the other abnormality. Um, it's a subdural. I mean, subdurals are disruption of those veins that bridge uh, between the dura and the subarachnoid. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, this is just a little information about subdurals. But uh, I mean, this guy, I mean, there's a differential, but not in the setting of trauma. I mean, you see that in the setting of trauma. And, uh, you know, that's a subdural hematoma. Um, that was a pretty thick hematoma. Like he didn't have two centimeters of midline shift, but he was like getting by the end, like it was pretty, uh, pretty dire. I think it was 1.4. Someone want to someone want to guess at this question, which of these injuries like has the highest mortality? Just a little piece of trivia here. C. So we have one vote for C. I mean, I guess it doesn't kill you, but functionally. So the question is about mortality, and uh, I'll give you the I'll give you a little extra information. Like when they're isolated, many times these these injuries are together, but isolated, like one of these is markedly worse than the others. Uh, I think B. Um, yeah, that's almost what everyone always says. Um, the reality is like subdurals are actually much worse, uh, for two reasons. One is that the people who tend to get subdurals tend to be like elderly patients who have more medical problems are on anticoagulation and like more stuff. Epidurals like tend to be younger people and car accidents and hit over the face. And they tend to be addressed more quickly because you see the fracture, you see the epidural and they go for neurosurgery. Um, the, uh, I guess everyone thinks about epidural because it's the one you hear about in medical school where you're like, this is really bad. Like you need to like have surgical intervention, you know, intermediate, I mean, immediately. Uh, but in reality, like subdurals are really bad. So beware of that. Go through your head CTs, like on a, on a different, like kind of uh, wider window to see those isodense subdurals. And uh, because they're, they're bad when you miss them. Um, trivia question, Fred from Scooby-Doo. I, I didn't know this until I was looking up a picture of him. Jones. <laughs> had like had like no idea like this is right this is like where I took this uh, I took this picture from like it's just uh, it's just ridiculous anyway um, I have another case here like very similar no one has to take this I'll just explain it to you this so this person was fifty I think she had been drinking and she fell off of the porch of her trailer um, so she went to an outside hospital she got urgently intubated. And uh, I don't know, like the intubation was like having some problems. So they like urgently trached her. And uh, then they get, she gets transferred and she like gets this CT like at our, at our place. And so she gets this contrast CT and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking WTF like happened to this person. There's this huge hematoma here. There's a trach and you know, when, like someone's like trached from like a minor trauma, you're like, you're like wondering like what the heck happened. And we used to get like the weirdest transfers from like outside hospitals. It happens here too. It's like somebody will be sent from Fresno. They're like intubated for airway protection when they're really fine. And they're like on propofol and like whatever. So I had, I had concocted this whole story uh, that maybe this, this hematoma was like related to, to some sort of airway trauma. I mean, look at this, this is crazy. I mean, this is like huge hyperdense hematoma. There's no airway. I mean, you, you can easily see like why this was a problem here. Um, but so, so it's the same clue as before. I mean, you have like all this soft tissue injury, but I'm looking at the alignment. The alignment doesn't look too bad. I don't have the bone windows for you here, or maybe I do in just a second. Um, I was, I was like pretty sure that this was like somehow like traumatic intubation and like, who knows, like what they did in the field. And I like took one last like look through here. And like, then I see this and uh, there's just this like, just this tiny little lucency through the spinous process at that, at that location. I, uh, I mean, like you can barely see this, like on the coronal, I mean, this is like the best look you got at it on the axial. It's, it's basically invisible. I mean, it's here. And, uh, I was like, wow, I kind of caught it at the last second. Like I was, it's one of those where you're like closing the study 
kind of wrapping up your dictation and kind of scrolling through like one last time. And uh, the funny part about this is like uh, a guy comes in the next day. It was like whoever, another resident and a faculty had been like overreading the study. And he came in and he was like laughing at me. And I was like, what? And he's like, oh, your report like on that person was hilarious. I'm like what? It's like no big deal. Like I saw the fracture, like whatever. And he's like, well, there was some gibberish like in the middle. And uh, we played it back because you could highlight it and like play it back. And it was like some gibberish. And he's like, you totally said, shit, there's a fracture. <laughs> and that like got report recorded by PowerScribe, transcribed as some gibberish, and I like didn't edit it out. And uh, I think when I was like scrolling through that last time, I still like had my finger like on the dictation button and it got transcribed through. Uh, just be aware of like other findings. Like when you have like a secondary sign of injury, uh, this, this can like really help you find, uh, find something. Like findings can be like very subtle and uh, they can be hard to see.